I am so excited because I actually have an athletic director that's under 50 years old. <laughs> he must be a player. Martin Jarman, welcome to the playbook. David, good to see you, brother. Now, I'm going to start out because you have an interesting title because it's tied to actually a sponsorship. And I had a ton of different ADs on here, but this is really cool because the Alice Nam and Liner family director of athletics at UCLA is your formal title, which is a testament to the legacy of UCLA, which is why you are in an interesting position as a young athletic director, because anything athletic at UCLA reeks legacy. I sit on the Rose Bowl legacy board. It, it is legacy UCLA. Everything can be sponsored here. What was the pressure for you coming? I know you've been involved at Ohio State, Michigan, all the big schools, but to come here to the legendary athletic department of UCLA, what was that pressure like at such a young age? I'm grateful for Allison and Nam Liner uh, and the family for, for naming the, the athletic director position. It was a generous gift by their family and uh, they've been remarkable. They were one of the first calls that I made when I took the job. And so um, I'm just blessed and fortunate to be here. I mean, obviously UCLA has a, such a rich tradition and history uh, of success and excellence. I mean, you're talking about 119 national championships, second most in the country, uh, barrier breakers, Ann Myers Drysdale, Kareem Abdul Jabbar, Jackie Robinson, Jackie Name Joyner Kersey, <laughs> Arthur Ashe. I mean, you can go on. Coach Wooden. I mean, you can go on and on with the level of excellence and success and uh, leadership that UCLA athletics uh, has lent itself to throughout the history of college athletics. So I'm just fortunate to be here. Uh, there's, there's pressure, but I, I put the most pressure on myself, you know, because I, I have high expectations of myself and, and what I, I want to do is help motivate and inspire young people and help them develop and help our, our staff and our coaches and colleagues um, work to make UCLA Athletics the best program we can be. And combined with the athletics, you talked about the social impact, but also the academics. Uh, and those, you know, that legacy has pervaded all, I, I'm in so many different schools, but the most significant one that I had when we represented Andrew Luck and went to his senior day, uh, Warren Moon Hall of Fame quarterback and I were sitting in the cafeteria with Andrew, uh, you know, talking about the draft. And I look over in the sports cafeteria where all of their athletes are, <laughs> their number one competitor, UCLA, they have the pyramid of success. And Warren and I looked over there. He's a Pac-12, was a Pac-8 guy, we're old, but Pac-12 <laughs> guy. And uh, Washington Husky, right? Exactly. Yeah, and yeah. he would have went to UCLA as well back then if uh, they would have accepted him. I think they, they uh, underestimated how good he was going to be, as many people did. Um, but moreover, you know, there's that pyramid of success. And it's amazing how so many business executives have taken the lessons learned from UCLA the professionals that you don't know about, who I do business with that run companies, that lead our country, uh, amazing leaders. And I know as the athletic director, you see beyond just the number two basketball team mm -hmm. in the country right now, you have all of these amazing professionals that are gonna go and take the values, the character, the integrity that your department represents and change the world. You know, for you, what's most important? Is it winning championships or is it empowering these students to understand we can win outside of the court, outside of the field as well? Well, make no mistake, we're here to serve our students, you know, and our student athletes are at the core of what we do to help them um, inspire and, and reach the best level of, of themselves that they can be. You know, we want to help them when they come to Westwood and come to UCLA, we make a commitment to help them be their very best. Uh, and that's, that's the goal. So we serve our student athletes. And here at UCLA, we talk about having an elite mindset. We talk about the word elite a lot. And that stands for energy, leadership, integrity, toughness, and excellence. And that's important. That's a mindset. That's not um, what happens on or off the result. That's not wins and losses. That's a, that's a mindset that you have every day. You've got to have energy and passion and juice to serve our students and do what we're capable of doing. You've got to start with leadership of yourself before you can lead others. That's what do you need to do personally to help you be your best, to give your colleagues, your teammates, our students your best. Integrity, we don't cut corners. We do things the right way here. That's non-negotiable here at UCLA. Toughness, that's grit. That's a level of see it through. Things are hard. You know, it's not easy being successful or great. It's hard. 
You got to have a level of, of determination and, and toughness to see things through. And finally, excellence, that last E, that's UCLA athletics. There's been a standard of excellence that we've aspired, uh, that we've achieved and we aspire to at UCLA. So that's what we talk about elite. And you talked about Coach Wooden and the, the pyramid of success. I remember my first job out of grad school was at Michigan State. And in my cubicle, I had the pyramid of success. And I read Coach Wooden's book. So I understand the importance of, of UCLA, the legacy of the pyramid and what we bring to people all over the world because it affected me as a young guy coming into the business. Uh, and that's something that we try to hold those ideals and values up every day. You know, I love interviewing athletic directors because there's a certain skill set, a certain knowledge, but also desire, right? And they take every win and loss just the same, if not worse than a coach. Uh, but the interesting thing is I think a lot of people don't understand the skill set of being a salesperson. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the greatest salespeople, we were talking about Jeremiah Donati, who was my lead agent. That's my guy, Stanford, Jeremiah, right? yeah. And, you know, Gene uh, over there at Smith at, at Ohio State and uh, Del Conte and all the greats. They're all amazing salespeople. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, for you, did you know getting into this business how much sales you had to do to, do to be an athletic director? No, I don't think uh, I don't think you come into athletics thinking that that you have to sell. You know, I think you come in because I was a former student athlete. So I came in because I had a great college experience. And I know there's so many people that poured into me that I wanted to do the same thing. But when you sit in this chair, you realize you sell. I mean, that's that's the reality. I, I tell people all the time, you know, there's two things that I sell. I either sell hope or I sell winning. You know, those are the two things. Either you're a winning program or, or, or a part of, uh, of great success and I'm, and I'm selling, hey, be a part of this. You don't want to miss this. Or you're selling hope. There's a brighter future. This is why we need investment. This is why we need your engagement. This is why you need to get on now because this program is going here. And so you're selling hope or you're selling winning. And, uh, and that's really important for the athletic director, in my opinion, to do because people want to be a part of success. You know, they want to um, experience that. You know, sports is an outlet for a lot of people. And make no mistake, we understand the importance of, of how we um, meet and engage people where they are. And so you're always selling. You're selling something like that. And I mean that in a, in a positive way uh, because you can't take for granted what a fan or a parent or an alum or even a student, a recruit, you can't take for granted they're just going to love your program or want to engage. You've got to make sure you show that value every day of why you should support and why you should come out and support our games and, and, and do those things. Yeah, it's so interesting, too, because you have such a wide gambit of, uh, of an audience. So you have your alumni who have to engage. Uh, but you also have like my three daughters that are, <laughs> you know, teenagers that are looking out there. And one of the criteria for them is I want to go to a school that has a winning team, mm -hmm. you know, or they want to participate. You know, one's a D1, you know, athlete. She wants to participate at a winning school, you know, doesn't want to go to <laughs> a, a school that's going to lose. And so there is pressure. That's important. And, and part of that's selling to get the right coaches. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, obviously there's no school that can talk about the coaches your women's softball coach, you know, unbelievable record. They do, they discount her, and I'm I'm drawing a blank on her name. Kelly Inouye Perez. Kelly, she's great, right? In great. Then you have she's John Wooden, but you know, selling the future uh, is an important part of it. What are some of the things that you're trying to establish here for selling the future to my daughter, who's looking at UCLA and saying, "This is what I want her to see from this department." Uh, everything starts with people. You know, and I think our people are our biggest resource and, and talent that we have at UCLA. And you mentioned the coaches. You mentioned Kelly. Kelly's a Bruin. She's lived it. She played here. She loves it here. Uh, she's one of the best, if not the best, softball coaches in the country. And so the first thing that I sell is you want to come and be with a coach that cares about you more than just an athlete, that cares about you as a person, that is going to push you but yet mold you and help you become your best. So what I sell first and foremost uh, is our coaches and the people you're going you're gonna to work with every day, and then obviously sell the school. We're the number one public institution in the country. Uh, we have a lot going here at Westwood, over 137,000 applicants, the most applied to school in the country. There's a reason why 
people want to come to UCLA. And it's because of the experience you have and who you become when you leave Westwood. So first and foremost, we sell the people. We have great coaches, great staff, and we've got a great place to learn and to grow and develop young people. So I would tell your daughter um, that, that she needs to think about the people first, and we have great people, and then the place. And uh, that's what makes you have an enriching experience. And part of that for you coming and taking over here, talk about change. You know, you have not only the pandemic to deal with, <laughs> yeah. but on top of it, NIL, which is the naming image and likeness rule, which mm -hmm. changes the entire economics of, you know, college sports. And I think it changes in the favor of a program like UCLA, which I know so well, an honest program. All it does is allows you to have more opportunity to recruit kids uh, where some people may have been cheating in the past. And, you know, now those players go legit because they can take money over the table, you know, and they get that money now. It's an advantage to a program like UCLA because they've been so honest and that they're able to now create opportunity for college kids. But I really am interested, you know, you coming in, you have between the pandemic and NIL, you know, there's a bunch of other students that never were able to, you know, make a couple hundred dollars for posting Dave Meltzer videos. You know, <laughs> you're like, I, I like the captain of the baseball team. And, you know, yeah, it's an advantage yeah. now to say, hey, you know, if you like my stuff, there's a huge opportunity. How have you been able to pivot yourself in, you know, such probably the most challenging or changing time in the history of college athletics? Make no mistake, this is one of the most chaotic times in college <laughs> athletics, and, and it's chaos. And, and when you encounter chaos, what you try to do is be steady to, to normalize the rhythms and everything that is happening around you. You can't get on this emotional roller coaster up and down. You have to stay steady, and that's what I try to think about every day when I come and, and work. So uh, name, image, and likeness, I love it because finally our student athletes are getting the ability uh, to, to go into business for themselves. That's really what it is. And that's what we do here in higher education. We teach you and we help mold you and develop you to where you can leave college and, and make money and find a profession and do things to better yourself and your family. That's what we do anyhow. So now name, image, and likeness gives us that chance, that opportunity to help educate you even more if you're gonna make mistakes in business, I'd rather you make them here on campus than when you're a professional. So now we can talk about tax law. Now we can talk about brand alignment. Are you sure you wanna sign this deal? This is what happens if you, if you do this, and I don't wanna name a, yeah. uh, an industry, but you know, there's some risk reward to what you're signing up for. Um, you understand good players and bad players in business. So, so from that standpoint, here in Westwood and at UCLA, we love it. You know, we've got a new program, Name, Image, and Lightness, called Westwood Ascent. And really, its pillars are education. Uh, we have speakers come in, alumni from all walks of life in the professional ranks to help you understand. We have partnered with the Anderson School of Business here, Anderson School of Management, and, um, and help understand the business aspects and components of what you're doing. And so to us, it's really a great opportunity because our student athletes are exploring things they, that they never had a chance to. I mean, I'm, I'm seeing more about crypto. I'm learning from our student athletes a little bit about yeah. crypto, for example, that, that never would have happened before. So, so it's a unique opportunity in a time right now where we can help our students. First and foremost, I'm always about that. If we can help them grow, if we can help them um, financially better themselves and, and learn business at the same time, absolutely. We can do that, but we also are in a place where I think we're making it more attractive in the value proposition of coming to UCLA because of what you're exposed to here in Westwood and LA and this market is, is the options are, are unlimited. So it's a, it's a good thing for UCLA, but it's more, most importantly, it's a good thing for student athletes. Yeah, I was uh, pitching to the NCAA years ago and talked as an example, Troy Aikman, and I said, you know, there's a corporate corporation that's making those jersey and you're telling me that Troy has nothing to do with it. I said, what if, you know, one week before the season, you know, Troy decided, you know, I'm gonna switch my number. What kind mm -hmm. of, right, what kind of pressure <laughs> would he have had? Right. All those hundreds of thousands of Troy Aikman jerseys yeah. that were already printed and, and ready to go. And I think LeBron tried to do that with uh, Anthony Davis when they signed, you know, and, and they said, no, not, not this year. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. And then you had musicians that could have multi-platinum albums that were in college on music scholarships, by the way. And there was mm -hmm. no conf conflict at all uh, for those musicians. 
Moving forward, one of the other things about being athletic director, since I like to get into the playbook, that I think is the hardest for me, because I think uh, with my background, uh, I would enjoy what you do. I'm a mm -hmm. great salesperson. I, I like to inspire kids. I like to teach. I like to make social change, mm -hmm. build the future. And look, women and men, more CEOs, more CEOs than any other common attribute played college sports than any other common denominator of the Fortune 500, especially wow. women. I mean, it's like in 90 percentile that women CEOs in the Fortune 500 all played college athletics. Oh, wow. Something special about it. But to that manner, one of the things I don't like about being an athletic director is firing coaches. Right. Yeah, and, yeah. and I see it on all my friends and and I can see your face change yeah, it's tough. Uh, because you have a personal relationship when you bring a coach in. And sometimes you and I both know it's not the coach's fault. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's a lot of factors that go. Yeah, into a lot of factors. So how do you deal with having to hire and fire uh, because of the record, maybe uh, when it comes down to that? and have to move on just to have a change. What's, is that difficult for you or, or what challenge does that face? It's very difficult. Um, everything for me starts with having a humanistic approach. You know, at the end of the day, these are uh, people. We're all people. We all have families and, and different situations. And so anytime you're making a, a change or a transition, it's tough. It's a difficult, but I try to approach it from a humanistic approach and have empathy. Uh, and understanding that this kind of decision, I don't take it lightly because it impacts people's lives in a significant way. Um, so it's always difficult to, to make a transition uh, because you pour so much of yourself into coaches and staff and, and you want people to do well and succeed. And uh, when it doesn't work out that way, it's, it's disappointing uh, to you, it's, it's disappointing to the, to the staff, and um, it's, it's hard. It's a, it's a tough thing when you make transitions with people because at the end of the day, you know, we all work, we all work hard and we're all trying to do our best. Uh, but you have to make decisions in the best interest of the institution and you have to understand that. So from that perspective, I try to approach transitions from a humanistic way, but also understanding I've got to do what's best for UCLA and our program and the students that we serve. You know, when they come to UCLA, they sign up for an experience. And it's, and it's, we try to give them a world-class experience. And that part of that is coaching and success off the field, off the court, and on, academically, athletically, socially. And so uh, you evaluate things, and if you have to make a transition, uh, you do it, but you do it in a humanistic way as much as you can and, and have empathy because, you know, it's, uh, it's a tough thing for, for people to digest, and, and uh, you know, no one wants to do that. Last thing that I find so interesting, there's no greater legacy. And we could list out all day long the championships. I know at one time, if not still, that UCLA, if they were their own country, would have more gold medals than <laughs> every country but five or something. I mean, the list, I, I'm a UCLA fan myself. It's ridiculous how many things you have. But with such tradition, it's amazing how progressive you are. Mm -hmm. You, you know, and it's not just because of your age, but you are one of the most progressive athletic directors that I know. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. that. And, and I, lo <laughs> I love it because in order to be progressive, and I've done so in a different respect, being in digital media as a middle-aged mutant turtle, you know, like <laughs> all everyone else is dancing on TikTok and I have a bigger following than all my kids combined, right? So I must do something progressive. But moreover, you know, to be progressive is to understand not to listen to what other people want for you not to listen to what's missing or what you don't want. You really have to understand what I call the Shakespearean revival. What I mean by that is to thine own self be true. Mm -hmm. And two, understand the stage theory of progressive. Meaning we're here today and there's a couple people in the office, but knowing that we could modify this to impact so many more people, amplify it all over the world for kids to see and adults to see, and it's also perpetual. Mm -hmm. So someone can go back and say, oh, I, you know, Dave had this guy on. I love Chris Del Conte. He's amazing or whatever. <laughs> and to be that progressive is so important. How much pressure or heat did you get? Because some of the decisions you make are not, you know, old school athletic director decisions. Is there any pressure on you to do what other people think is right? Absolutely. Anytime you do something that is in a non-traditional way, you get criticism and people don't understand. And usually with lack of understanding, comes heat, right? You're right? And so it's a lot uh, easier if you win though. It's a lot easier <laughs> if you win. But you know, uh, I, I, I'm big on meeting people where they are. You know, that's part of the main reason I use social media so much is because 
our students are on social media. They're on Instagram, TikTok. They're on they're on all LinkedIn, that, right? And so there. you've got to meet people where they are, and you have to be authentic. I'm going to be myself. You know, I, I can only be the best version of myself. I can't be someone else as good, right? And so if you have that level of authenticity, uh, and then you also have to have a, a sense of anticipation, you know, go where the, you know, skate where the puck yeah, is going. Wayne Gretzky. Yeah, yeah, you've got you've to be able to see that. And I think you have to have an insatiable appetite for learning. I try to learn all the time. And I think the more you, you, you work at learning, listening to podcasts, reading books, um, making yourself uncomfortable. You know, I, I don't have a TikTok account, but I, I follow, my wife shows me TikTok <laughs> accounts all the time and I, I follow because I understand young people learn that way. So if you think about TikTok from a learning perspective or social media, then we wanna educate, I need to be there because I need to help understand um, how people are, are consuming information, how they are learning, how they are growing. And so that's part of that. So I need to be there. But at the end of the day, you know, I can't worry about if people don't understand it. If I feel in my heart that it's the right thing to do and it's going to help me reach people and impact change, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to feel um, empowered to do it. And, uh, you know, you, you just can't. There's a level of in this role, there's a level of blinders you have to have because uh, it, can get, it can get nasty out there, especially you point out when you lose, you know. It's, I try to not get on social media <laughs> after certain losses because you know what it's going to be. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you, every day your approach is, I'm going to do what's best for my institution, for my athletic program, and, uh, and I want to be innovative and bold. But, but it starts with being myself, you know, and, and that's, that's who I am. And um, I do things a little unconventionally, but, hey, that's, that's okay because I uh, – that's the only way I know how to be as effective as I'm, as I'm trying to be. Well, Martin Jarman, you are a true leader. Athletic director here at UCLA. A leader is someone that's an intelligent follower. And that's what I hear, the greatest playbook to success that we've learned here today with you. I appreciate you coming on. This is David Meltzer with The Playbook. 